All right, so um, it's been a little while later, and I'm just checking the status of my app. I kind of like the kid waiting for Santa. And here it says under review. So that's what cha mine changed to say under review. Uh, so I'll keep waiting for that today. But here's other things that we're going to talk about. So let's say my app is available. It's on Amazon, uh, ready for people to buy or download for free. Uh, let's then talk about doing this uh, this promotion. So part of what I do, not only do I do I teach, you know, making apps and websites and all of that. I, I also uh, teach social media and uh, search engine optimization, and and I do that for clients too. I make them websites. I and I uh, do online marketing and promotion and and all of that. So this is an aspect of getting your app noticed because you're not going to have um, a big hit right away, especially if people don't know about it. Does anyone remember that game Flappy Bird from a few months ago? Flappy Bird was out for several months until one article on a famous website blew it up. And then it had lots and lots of downloads and it made the, it made the author uh, get like hundreds of thousands of dollars from that application. So again, the thing about how do you get other people to, to know about your app? And there's a couple of ways we can do this, and we'll, we'll talk about both. So um, because, because we're making an Android app, and Android is, is, is owned by Google, uh, we're going to leverage the power of Google's social network to promote our app. Does anyone know Google's social network? Google Plus. Google Plus. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at using Google+. Plus. Now, Google+, Plus is a free uh, uh, social network, of course, and um, I really like it. I use them all, especially for clients, but I like Google+, Plus because you can uh, target your message to certain groups for free. Uh, in that Facebook, you, you can target your message there also, but that's the part where then you have to boost your post, which is Facebook's term for pay for exposure. So let's talk about Google+. Plus. How many of you currently have a um, Gmail account? Alright, so if you have a Gmail account, you have access to Google+. Plus. Uh, so if you go to plus.google.com, that's the login portal uh, where you can log in with your Gmail account or your YouTube account or any other Google service. Let's check out plus.google.com. What we're going to do then, of course you can do this as much or as little as you want, uh, where we're going to create a, a, Google, a Google Plus account and um, use it for promoting our app. We're going to create here when you go to plus.google.com it asks you to sign in so if you've already got a Gmail account you can sign in with it or you can go in here under create an account now you decide what you'd like to do because what you could do is create an account since it's all free you can create a brand new account just for just for your your app and such the way Google Plus works is um, there are personal profiles and there are company pages, very similar to Facebook. Facebook has the aspect of people creating a personal profile. And then companies can also create a Facebook, but they're creating a page, very similar here in Google+. And actually, both companies, Facebook and Google, want you to create a personal account first and then a business account. So it's a, it's a mistake, actually and against their terms of service, technically, to when we create an account either via create an account or log in, to set it up as a business account. What they want is a person to first create an account and then as many business accounts as, as, as you want. So let's think about our use case here. I'm, I'm Victor, but I'm the representative of my company, victorapps.com. So my company is what 
uh, ultimately I'm going to be promoting my app from victorapps.com. So I want a Google Plus page for victorapps.com. But I can't, or I shouldn't, go in and create an account and set it all up with victorapps.com info. I should still create a Victor Campos Google account and then create the business page. So you have to decide what you'd like to do to either sign in and then it's going to ask you, okay, let's create your Google Plus profile. And it's still going to be expecting you to create a personal one. So this is what I'm saying. Maybe just to learn this stuff, and it can be deleted later, maybe we should all just simply go to create an account. So I can step you through that process to avoid the pitfalls. Once you kind of learn that, then you can do that with your currently existing account. But I'm going to go through this as if I'm creating a brand new account. So at the bottom here, click Create an Account. It's going to ask you this stuff. And again, we want to fill this out as a person. I don't want to put in here, you know, victorapps.com. That's not going to work. And even if I'm just calling this Victor Apps, I wouldn't do that. Or Victor Apps. You know, if, if this were my company, which is PMD Interactive, I wouldn't put it like this. That's That wouldn't be right. It's not a first name and a last name. It's a company name. What we do want to fill out here is a person's name, your name. You could make it up. You could do Darth Vader. That'll work if you want. But the point is we do need a personal account first and then create the business account. So I will fill this out as my name. A username is going to be a Gmail account. Uh, it's not going to quite let me use an existing email account. Yeah, so if I already have an existing email account, I can't use that as my username. It says you can add this later. But it does want you to create a Gmail account here. And again, since these things are free, uh, you can make this up right now. So I'm just going to call this whatever, SDCE Victor Campos. Create a password. Birthday, you can make that up or just put January 1st, So I'm going to skip filling in a phone number and an alternate email. I'm going to fill in the CAPTCHA at the bottom and click this, the little check mark that I agree to the terms. Then on this next screen for me, it's asking me, create your public Google Plus profile. Is it, is it asking you that? This is a little bit different. They might have changed their system. So I'm going to see what happens if I say no thanks. I don't want to create a profile just yet. This is Welcome Victor, and OK, I'll click Continue to Google+. OK, so even if I don't, so if I 
it was create one or not create one, and I click no, but it's still going to take me through this about creating one. But uh, <coughs> again, I'm just going to put this as minimal as possible. There's my name, whatever. I will select upgrade. It asks to connect your uh, your existing contacts. I'm going to skip that so I can just click continue at the bottom right. It's going to mention a bunch of things to follow. I'm going to skip all of that because uh, this is Google Social Network. It's like Facebook. It's like Twitter. You can make connections. You can see people's pictures. You can comment on stuff. You can like stuff, etc. That's fine, but I'm not going to use that for this. I'm not going to use this like a place for friends. That's maybe what I already use Twitter for or Facebook. I want to use this as a place to advertise my app. So I'm going to choose to skip all of this. I won't select any of this to follow, but I'll just continue. It's going to say it might be lonely. Yeah, I'll continue anyway. I can continue to fill this out. I won't fill any of this out because, again, I don't want to fill this out about my high school and all of that. I don't care to use it for that purpose. I just want to get my foot in the door. I want to click Finish. I want to get my foot in the door to create this personal account so that then I can create business pages. Then I can create a business page for my company, victorapps.com. And then from there, I want to use the power of Google Plus to get people to know about my app to promote my app, to answer questions about my app, to get people to check it out and test it, uh, get it viral. So I get to this screen. You can go through this tour about learn more. It'll t it'll give you a, a preview of all the different screens that are inside of Google Plus. But I'll, I'll close that for the moment. In Google Plus, it's like the other networks where you have this home screen where you see content. You can interact with it. I'll get back to that. Here's the main thing we want to do. At the top left, I've got this menu that's always <coughs> present. Mine says Home. If you hover over it, these are the different sections of Google Plus. If I scroll down, the menu is always there, but it can collapse like that. If I hover over it, it always shows that. So this is the menu and it changes depending on what section I'm on. But this right now, I, I currently have this personal profile. This profile. I didn't <coughs> fill anything out and I'm not going to use it as a person. I want to use this as my company. I have to create a, com a, company, uh, a company page. So up on the menu, if you hover over, you have a section called Pages. So one personal account can create as many business pages as they want. So we'll try that. If you hover over the menu, select Pages. There's a little video you can watch, but not just yet, because uh, you, have, you have to turn on your volume. But what this is going to say, this video is just going to say create a, person, uh, create a business page so that you can get followers, so that you can get uh, likes, so that you can get traffic to your to your website, or to your business, or to your app. And it's free. So I'm going to select Get Your Page. And then it asks, are you a storefront, a service area, a brand? Um, most likely, we're going to select a brand. Um, Storefront is a bit more for a physical location type of company. Um, my company is, it is not on Main Street. It's not a physical location, so I won't use Storefront. I don't, I'm not really servicing an area. Like I'm not a plumber that goes to an area to work at uh, my company. You know, I, Maybe I make apps and that sort of thing, so it's for brand. But let's say you took what you learned in this class and you did make an app for your company, which is, let's say, a pizza shop. You know, you have to decide what, what, your, what would work here. And you're not going to be limited if you choose the wrong thing, and it can be changed. But I'm going to say to select brand. That's the name of my page. Again, this is where we're going to fill this out as your company. So I would, I would create here 
uh, victorapps.com. That's the name of my company. If I have a website, I would put in my website's address as well. Type of page. Um, in my case, um, I'll select other. Does the page name have to be distinct from somebody else's page name? No, actually, this could be. This is not case sensitive or whatever. So I could, I could, in, I could put here, you know, Best Buy. It'll let me. On a different part of Google Plus is where I select my Google Plus address. But then my Google Plus address, that's the one that is the distinct one. I wouldn't be able to take Best Buy. So I'm going to say, uh, that's what I filled in, I will create page. <clears throat> I get a screen that, that welcomes me, and I get a check mark that says it, it'll send me emails to keep me up to date on relevant information. I created that brand new Gmail account, so those emails will go there. But if you decided to use your own existing email, that's where you're going to get sent those. You may turn that on or off. I'll turn it off. If you had leave it on, it'll send you emails once in a while to update you on what's happening in the service. You can do you can, if you click Get Started, it'll take you on a tour to different screens in, um, in Google+, Plus. but I'm going to select Skip the Tour. And then I get this screen here, which is my business's dashboard. Notice my menu up here says My Business, and if I hover over, that's the menu again. Now it says Google Plus page instead of profile. So that's a little distinction about one is business, one is personal. Uh, this is my business page. And I can switch back and forth at the top right. Notice up here also it says that's the name of my company. I can switch back and forth with this icon. Let's see, there's my personal one. It's got a little, little person. And I click on it again, and it takes me to my page. It's got a little present, but if I do edit to my profile, I'll have it all with my branding and such. And everything that I'm going to be talking about here, I'm talking about it in general. I'm going to show you enough about it that maybe it interests you to, to further explore this. And actually, at this campus, I teach uh, a, a more full, in-depth course on social media. As the class winds down, I'll, I'll talk about other classes that I teach, but I teach a, a social media class where in that we spend the whole, you know, three or three and a half hours per day where we focus on today it'll be Google+, Plus, and I'll look at all of the stuff Google+, Plus has to offer, and the next day we'll look at Facebook, and the next day we'll look at Twitter, or Pinterest, we'll, we'll focus on a social network more in-depth. I teach these social media classes for business. If you've got a website you need to get on social media, you know, nowadays you've got a website, but that's the minimal, the minimum thing you can do. You also want to be on Facebook and Twitter and all of that social media. That's what that class is about. So uh, again, I'll talk about that in general. I'm only going to, uh, in another class. In this class, I'm going to talk about, again, cr concretely, what, well, what can we do with this? We've got here a Google Plus page, which taps into the hundreds of millions of accounts that are using Google Plus, and this is like Facebook in that, you know, I can go to my stream, and if I'm following accounts, their stuff will show up here. I'm not following any, that's why I don't see anything. Uh, if I go back to my business, this is my account and such, or my page. Um, I'm going to go to stream. And at the top here, I've got share what's new. So think about this. I can share here, I can share a link to my app. Now, uh, Amazon probably doesn't have this ready yet, but if my app were available, I would have a link for my app. So let me, let me show it in this way, for example.
So I have this other app I made previously. Eventually when your app is available, you'll have an Amazon listing like this. It'll look like any other Amazon listing, but here's you know, the screenshots of my app and I've got a video for it and so forth. But I've got <clears throat> I've got an app and it says here, you know, here it is from for Android and such. And my uh, any everything on uh, on Amazon has its own link. You've got the link at the very top, sure, but you've got under share on the right side here you've got this share link right here, this short link. So every product on Amazon actually has that. You can always go to the share and you'll get the short link. So the point of this is let's say that our app is available on Amazon or on Google Play uh, and we've got Google Plus so what we can do here is you know we, we're gonna share something, share a link and I'm gonna share something on Google Plus with a link over to my app gives me a nice little promo for it and such and so uh, I would be sharing it to Google Plus now on Facebook you might be used to the paradigm of I've got 50 friends so if I post something on Facebook those 50 friends could see it on their home you know, their, their, their wall or timeline or whatever um, Google Plus and, and Twitter and Facebook uh, company pages work under a different paradigm in that uh, it's about followers whereas regular Facebook accounts is if I'm a person and I have a former high school friend and I get a friend request from them and I say yes now we're both connected so whatever I share she might see whatever she shares I might see that's a one-to-one -one connection but on Google Plus or on Twitter or on a Facebook business page I can have my company page and a bunch of followers following me so when I post something they'll see it but I don't have to follow them and I won't see their stuff so that's what I want on this social media I want to have my business account and I want to have followers so that when I post something they will see it at the moment I just created this account so again it's the chicken or the egg I don't have any followers so if I post something no one will see it I want to have followers so that when I post something they'll see it but I don't have followers so if, I'm, if I were to simply post this, if I were to share this, all zero of my followers would see it. Even though I put this as public, that's, that's like no one is seeing it. Everyone can see it, but no one is seeing it. It's like if I go to, uh, you know, if I go outside and just start talking, I'm saying something to the public, but no one's paying attention. I don't have followers. So what I like about Google Plus is I'm not going to share something simply to the public. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to share that to what Google Plus calls their communities. I can go to communities where I have like a captive audience. I can go to communities on a variety of topics, like Android apps or um, you know a cooking community. Let's say my app is about my recipes. It would be great to go to that cooking community, put my app there, and the people that care about cooking might care about my app. And that's much better than me simply posting this to the public when I have no followers. So here on Google+, Plus, if I go back to the menu, I've got here Communities. If I go to Communities, it's going to give me suggestions. Well, you might like the Photography Community, where there are 606,000 members. And I'll show you how to do this in a moment. But if I were to post something in this community, I could have a captive audience of 606,000 people. Whereas in the if I posted it in the way I showed a moment ago, I would have an audience of zero. I don't have any followers. Gaming. Let's say I took what I've learned in this class and learned some more and make a game. I could join this gaming community and post here a link to my app and I could potentially have 471,000 people looking at it, clicking on it, downloading it. So there's suggestions. And then of course at the top there's search. Uh, 
I'm actually going to type up here search. I'm going to type Android. So we have several Android communities. This one's called Android. It's got 600,000 members. This one's also Android. It's 265,000. This one is Android Development, 181,000. Android App Design, 130,000. Now, before I join any of these, I want to see, well, what are they about? I can click on a community. I can see usually something about, about the community. Welcome to the official Android development community. This community is, <coughs> excuse me, is all about building great apps for Android. This community is all about you, so share, share your development tips and tricks, inspirational apps, development challenges, and anything else. And there are sections. Check out my app. Favorite tools and libraries, tips and tricks, general discussion. Well, this seems like a nice community to get into, so I can simply click join. So now you might not have noticed, but since I've joined it now, it says share what's new. And when I share here, it's going to be shared to this community with 181,000 people. So if I were to post a link to my app here and put it specifically into the Check Out My App section, maybe write something about it. Uh, here's my new app. Please give some feedback, whatever you want to write, and then share. That'll be posted to many more people um, than the ones that I've got following. Even if you use Google Plus for a while and you start to get followers, you probably will not have 180,000 followers. I've been using Google Plus for a while, uh, 2011, when they made the, the service available to the public. Uh, and at the moment, I think I've got like 800 followers. So still, even that doesn't compare to the power of, of leveraging a, a community. But this is the part, this is, this is advertising, this is marketing, this is stuff that is, a, is one, one side of the coin of, of, of what we're doing here. We can, of course, focus completely on the code and, and be editing our, our app and keep working on it. But then when we get to the point about let's build some buzz for it, let's get people to know about it, let's get people to download it, uh, a lot of times that might not be covered in a class or, or you might not have a lot of um, resources out there. I wanted to cover that in this class because it is important. It is, this is how you get your app to be known. This is how you get to Flappy Bird fame. Um, as I was saying, Flappy Bird was out for months before anyone heard about it. They got one write-up on, on some tech blog, and then everyone wanted it. So much so, do you guys know the story about what happened? The guy put that app out, it got very, very, very big, he, got, he made a lot of money from it, and then he got too much fame too fast, and he took the app down. Um, he says, he wrote it to the community, I said, I can't take it anymore, this is taking over my life, and he shut the app down after he got a few hundred thousand dollars out of it. Um, but that can happen, um, and that was, that was that viral marketing of it, and you've got to start somewhere. So if we create a free Google Plus account and start to promote our app here, it could help us out. But again, this is, this is an art, this is a science, this is marketing, this is advertising. This is another, perhaps, aspect that we don't have any experience in or any comfort zone in, but at least here I want to introduce it to you to see what are some of the possibilities. Again, if you're more interested in this, I teach a social media class. I go into detail. I give more tips and advice. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So the best thing I can say at the moment is, here under the communities, you should go in and, and take a moment to search and join communities 
that might be relevant for the promotion of your app. So I joined this large Android community and also the app design community because not only can I use this for my purposes, which is to promote my app, but other people are here too, like under the app design community. About this community it says, uh, again, this is the official Android design community. It's all about designing your app for Android. Feel free to share your design tips and tricks, screenshots, and favorite beautiful apps, design mockups, and anything else you find useful and relevant. And other people have done so. If I scroll here on the left side under topics, I can go here. There's a whole section on beginners with 5,000 posts. Maybe I'll find there a few more things to continue my, my knowledge. Documentation and resources. Maybe someone posted a link there to some cool icons I can use. Templates and such. I'll look under design tips and tricks. So for right here, this, this, this person is asking a question. I would like to ask a question about icon making. When you create the icon in Photoshop, are you supposed to add the underlying shadow that helps the icon stand out from the background, or is it done in code? If I have to do it in Photoshop, I use the drop shadow, etc., etc., and then people have replied here. So basically RTFM. Here's a link there. It's not done in code. Add the drop shadow. I use this in Photoshop. Apply, more links. It's a place to maybe get some question and answers and, and helps and, and such. So here's an interesting one <clears throat> in this section. This is a this is a link. This is an infographic about how color affects user engagement and adoption. Maybe I want to check that out. So Google Plus isn't just good for advertising my app. It's a place for me to continue to learn, find interesting things. like this it says 92 percent 92 point six percent of people say the visual dimension is the number one influencing factor affecting their purchase decision over other factors like taste smell etc so again this is judging a book by its cover we might not be the most adept in making graphics and such but that's why I decided to take some time to talk about that because the package uh, the, the wrapping around your present is important Studies suggest people make a subconscious judgment about a product within 90 seconds of initial viewing. Up to 90% of that assessment is based on color alone. So it shows some interesting stats about color and such. 
This is an interesting one here. In a marketing experiment, Heinz changed the color of their signature ketchup from red to green and sold over 10 million bottles in the first seven months, resulting in $23 million in sales. So I think I remember that. Green ketchup instead of red ketchup, and then people bought it. They want the week was his last report and it said he was making fifty thousand dollars a day. Oh a day. On in app advertising. Yeah, they're in app. Exactly. It was a free app, but then you had those ads that you accidentally click and he was making fifty thousand a day. So then there's here about colors and such. So again, I would have found, I might have found this other other methods, um, but by going into this community, I'm finding a lot of interesting things related to Android development. And again, uh, this is, you know, for the for the topic of Android development. But let's say I make this app and it's my portfolio. I want to show off my paintings. I want people to buy my paintings, and I make this app for people to see that. Maybe this is the only way to get to view high quality uh, copies of my of my images because if I put them on a website, anyone can steal them. Let's say if they're in an app, you can still enjoy my paintings, but not you know not in a way that they can uh, uh, print them out and such. But um, so then I could go in here and search for communities on on art, and in there, uh, of course, it's always it could be a double edged sword because you always want to go to the community and read. The community rules because there might be a community rule that says no self-promotion you would be violating the community rules and these have moderators see right here Roman he's the moderator and a community might have more than one and you might have violated a rule and then you, your post is removed from the community so you lost that little bit of advertising and if you didn't notice that and you kept doing it maybe you're removed from the community you can't post to that community with 180,000 people so the double-edged sword is check out these communities, which could be a great captive audience, but make sure you follow the rules of the community to take most advantage of it. Like I see here, do not attach direct Google Play links to posts. While direct links to Google Play look great in Google+, Plus, they can be quite spammy. If you're looking for design feedback on your app or are posting about a well-designed app, attach screenshots or video. At most, paste the link into your post's body text. Okay, so I think that's saying if oops, if you are posting here, don't just put the link. You know, you want to use the text area over here because it'll just look like an advertisement. So always read the rules. So this, this is another tip of another iceberg, this whole Google Plus marketing and such. And you can do very similar things in this in Facebook. You might be more comfortable using Facebook. Uh, you post on your Facebook wall and all your friends and family will see, hey, you've got a new app and maybe you'll get some downloads from them. But even if you've got a lot of friends, even if you've got 500 friends on Facebook, you don't have 130,000 friends, probably. So um, this is a great place to look into to get more, more buzz for your app. And it's not going to be overnight, but as you learn how to use social media for your business, it will help out in the longer term. So we're going to wrap up very soon, but the last thing that I'll say is if you do look on the school's catalog, and you search for social media, You can see several classes, many of them I teach. But I've got here social media for your business, January, and to uh, January Thursdays. So over in January, 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., mm -hmm. once a week. And then Fridays, 9 a.m., I'll be teaching a social media for your business. So I teach that class about using social media for your business, but it can apply, of course, for your apps. You want to get your app 
on, on social media, you want to get buzz for it, attention, uh, clicks and downloads and such, that's a class. These other ones taught by other instructors, I don't know how they teach it. Using social media, including Facebook and Twitter, I don't know what that instructor does. But I know in my class, every day we spend a day on one social media network. One day on every nuance of Google+. Plus. Usually it's Google+, Plus, Twitter, and Facebook. If it's four weeks long, we also do Pinterest. If it's longer than that, we do other networks. But uh, that's what I want to cover for today. We'll wrap up the lecture at this point and have a little bit of lab time when we come back. It'll be the last day of class. We've got other things we can do too. So thanks for coming today. Make sure you've signed in. Remember to save your work and take it with you, and then when we come back next time, we'll keep working.